Let's talk about Eurovision, uh, which seems to be, have become a hotbed of uh, you know, pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel activity. God, it's so depressing, isn't it? Uh, uh, but uh, first up, uh, let's have a look at uh, the singer who's tipped to win. She is Ireland's Eurovision sensation, uh, Bambi Fug. Uh, <laughs> she's non-binary. Of course. Uh, I don't know what her pronoun is, but I'm going to call her she, you know, because she's a girl. Uh, well, woman, actually. She's 31 years old. Uh, let's have a look at Bambi. Take it away, Moose Thug. Uh, there you go. Lovely song, Bambi. Good. Best of luck. Uh, Let's uh, introduce uh, our next guest uh, because I want to talk about uh, some of these demonstrations that are going on and then I'll play you a bit more footage in a little while of our friend the Doom Goblin, uh, Greta Thunberg. Uh, but uh, a warm welcome to uh, Rabbi Jonathan Romain. Hello, Jonathan. Good evening to you. Uh, now, there's a story involving Bambi, uh, which I think you know about. We'll get into that in a minute. But before we do, uh, Bambi's not the only one making a stand for Palestine over there in Malmo in the unlikely setting of the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, uh, Greta Thunberg, the tireless uh, climate change uh, campaigner, has taken a break from uh, trying to save the planet to try to save Palestine. So here's a demo in Malmo featuring uh, Greta Thunberg, who I assume may have flown there. Uh, so that's probably not very good for the planet, but take it away, Greta and her friends. I think they should be everywhere. And once again, uh, young people are, are leading the way, showing, showing uh, the world how, how, they, how, how we should react to this. How we should react to this. Now, the story, uh, Jonathan, that I th informed you of, Bambi Thug, she's tipped to win. Having seen that song, God knows why, but she is. Uh, she, uh, as you saw, has all this body paint on. And what she had uh, printed, body paint printed on her body, was uh, the words, uh, it was written, uh, if you will, uh, in early medieval Ogham script. Uh, so you couldn't really work out what it was. But what it actually said was ceasefire and freedom. I think she hoped to get that under the Eurovision ra radar. To their credit, the organisers spotted it and it has now been changed to crown the, w the witch. And uh, Bambi's very upset about that. She said, it was very important to me because I'm pro-justice and pro-peace. I mean, my thoughts are, of course you are, now grow up. Uh, but what, what do you think about this? Uh, you know, as, as a Jewish person, that something like the Eurovision Song Contest turns into a hotbed of pro-Palestine and, frankly, anti-Israel sentiments uh, to the extent that is the Israel contestant had to change her song. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there are news programmes and there are entertainment programmes, and I think the two should be kept separate. So on the news, we rightly see what's happening in the world, including some terrible things in Gaza, uh, we're suffering on both sides, that's very obvious, and you can't help but be sympathetic both to the Israeli hostages and their families mm -hmm. and also to some of the Gaza and Palestinians who are suffering. So, you know, there's no one-upmanship here, uh, there's no hierarchy of suffering, it's, it's, it's awful wherever it happens. But that's news, and that's what we see at 10 o'clock or uh, on, on uh, Talk TV, um, and it's probably uh, the most X-rated programme we can ever see, the news programme, it's <laughs> horrific. But um, on the entertainment side, I think there should be a clear dividing line. I and mean, that's what Eurovision is. It's, it, it is pure entertainment. Um, it, it's devoid of politics deliberately. It's there to celebrate music, personalities, uh, celebrate what we've got in common. Um, and that's really, and it tries to really deliberately bridge the barriers um, of, of all the different cultures and, and all the different political divides and, and social divisions. Uh, and that's why I think it was right, actually, um, for the Eurovision Song Contest authorities, both to stop uh, Bambi Thug uh, giving political statements and also, you know, to be fair, to pull up the Israeli entry uh, because they thought, r I don't honestly know whether it was right or wrong, that her original title of her song, October Rain, re referred to the October 7th Hamas attacks. that has been changed to Hurricane. And the point is, if you're going to be politically neutral, um, and, and yeah, I, I get that. I, get, I think that's out. fair enough. And you've got to be consistent. So, you know, they did it on both sides of the conflict. That's fair enough. Let's enjoy the music. And that's really the message of Eurovision. 
um, forget the politics just for an hour or two. Um, yeah. We're not going to escape yeah. it. Let's go. enjoy the music if that's humanly possible. Uh, but uh, why is it, you know, you've got Greta Thunberg, you've got Bambi Thug, all these young people, massive demonstrations going on in Sweden, in Malmo, at the Eurovision. Why is it that, you know, I'm not seeing any free the hostages demonstrations. Why is it always pro-Palestine and, frankly, anti-Israel? Well, I must admit I am puzzled um, for two reasons. Uh, I mean, I'm not puzzled that people are sympathetic to the plight of the Palestinians because, you know, yeah, whatever you yeah. must, uh, okay. and who are a pretty murderous organisation and who've said that they would do October the 7th all over again, given the chance, so no sympathy for Hamas, but you can't help but be sympathetic to Palestinians. The trouble is, why is it just Palestinians? I mean, actually, if you look at the United Nations, they say the greatest famine, the greatest tragedy at this very moment is Sudan, mm -hmm. um, where millions are on the brink of starvation. What about the Uyghurs? What about the Rohingyas? Uh, what about the people who have been, uh, the thousands who were killed in Syria? Um, by President Assad killing his own citizens. It is very strange that people yeah. don't come in protest. They don't put tents on the uh, Oxford and Cambridge lawns. Uh, they don't yeah. interrupt. I'm, I'm afraid, Jonathan, that I, 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 that I smell the spectre of anti-Semitism, which seems to be coming acceptable, and that's a disgrace. Uh, listen, enjoy the uh, song contest uh, if you can, and thank you very much for talking to me.